So you saw this past Friday, the first video in a whole string of videos that now incorporate all this acoustical treatment that I put in in the studio. The last few videos that were on the channel I filmed a little over a month ago and that was before I had anything up. And what's amazing is that the room sounds vastly different with all the treatment now. And so at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you the before and after. But first I wanna tell you a little bit about the strategy with all the panels in here and how the gray one right here and right behind me and another one over here, uh, how we actually made those. These are DIY panels. The black ones are store-bought, so-called, I guess, and the gray ones are total DIY. I'll tell you how much they cost to build and walk you through the process of how we built them. So thankfully, I was smart enough to enlist the help of my good friend, Aaron, to help me out with all this. He's basically an acoustician. He's got degrees in this stuff, and he does it for a living. He builds audio systems, he designs studios, and he can walk around a room and know what the issues are with the room and how to solve them as best as possible with the resources possible. And so in my scenario here, I had a set of the Prime Acoustics panels, the black ones that you see back here, as well as all the RLX foam. Plus, I was kind of halfway in the process of making the DIY ones. So that's roughly what we had to work with. So it was a matter of, okay, how can we maximize this and get the most absorption and get the room sounding as good as possible? with what we've got here without spending additional money because you can definitely spend a lot of money on this. If you get anything out of today's video, I want it just to be encouragement that you can do some acoustical treatment at a fairly low cost. So the cool thing about the DIY panels is that they actually cover a good bit of square footage. The two back here behind me are 42 inches by 42 inches. I don't remember how I landed on that, but they're squares. I have another one over here that's uh, 42 inches tall, but a little bit less wide. I literally just started with a two by two frame, had a couple of two by twos, um, probably $5 for both of them screwed them together with wood screws, and then the gray fabric that's on the front is actually salvaged from some curtains that my wife had that she told me to use for this kind of stuff if I needed them, which actually worked great because I think they look really good. They look nice in the room. They kind of jump out a little bit, provide a little bit of contrast, but they're not annoyingly bright. So I really like the color and I, I like gray. So I stretched that over the frame, stapled that into place, made sure it was stretched tightly. And then what we did, so I kind of started some of that process when Aaron came in and said, okay, here's how we're gonna make these really good. And so what we did was we took some extra towels, just some bath towels. I had a few lying around. I had a few that I'd gotten from Walmart. And we laid the towels now inside the frame, flipped over. We stapled those nice and tight because at this point we wanted to put some insulation inside to actually do the real absorption because the towels and the cloth alone aren't really gonna do that. But we needed the extra layer of towel to really be a fiber barrier just to keep the insulation from making a big mess and leaking out through the panel, which isn't good. So that's why we did that extra layer. We bought a roll of just basic R13 insulation that was, I think it was $20 for the roll. And really we used about a fourth of that roll for each panel that we did. And so it's safe to say $5 of insulation for each panel, that's not bad at all. So we cut the insulation, laid it in place, stapled it down. And at that point, all we had to do was somehow seal it off. And so Aaron sent me out into the garage to find something we could use to hopefully wrap around it just to keep things sealed in place and to compress it a little bit because ideally we would have used a thinner insulation, but we used the thinnest we could find at Home Depot that day. And so we needed to compress it a little bit just so the panels didn't bulge on the wall. And of course, when you're installing insulation as a like a thermal barrier, when you're finishing a basement, you don't want to compress it because that messes up that, that property of it. But in this scenario, we're making acoustic panels it's fine to compress it, it's still gonna absorb sound. We wanted to get rid of as much of that bulge as possible. So it turns out I had this giant clear plastic drop cloth out in the garage that I'd actually used to make sort of uh, plastic hanging doors here before I finished the basement installed doors. So we salvaged some of that, cut some big squares, and then stretched that across the back side of the panels, pressed it down, got it as tight as we could get it so the insulation was compressed and the panels weren't bulging. Stapled that down, trimmed the edges, and at that point, we had a finished, pretty professional looking, from the front side at least, DIY panel. So because these were the bigger panels, we decided to put them in the main locations, you know, right behind the drum set, right to the side of the drum set, right over here. I actually have this one covering over a hole in the wall that we had to leave open to access the electrical panel. So that's really the purpose of that one, and it's covering a pretty large area too. And then the Prime Acoustics panels are great too, and so we use those to fill in the spaces and put the Prime Acoustics squares up on the ceiling which also really helps a lot. When you've got drum sounds, you don't want to neglect doing something with the ceiling. And then I had a bunch of the leftover RLX foam, and so we just lined that around the top and around the bottom. So the cool thing about this setup is that each type of panel is really doing slightly different things with frequencies. And so they're all really working together to create a really good room sound here, where we're getting rid of the frequencies we don't want, but we're keeping a little bit of room sound. What we didn't want to do was group everything together in one spot so it's a giant wall of foam. 
and then an exposed wall over here because that's really, it's gonna make things too dead and it's gonna sound weird. So we wanted to spread it evenly so that we've got a nice, healthy room sound without just killing it completely, but we've gotten rid of the stuff we wanna get rid of. Also something else to mention, because we had leftover insulation and there's this ledge, sort of this wall up along the ceiling up here, because I had to lower the ceiling and basically build around some ductwork, we decided, well, let's do something with that because really we need to put something there, but we were out of the professional treatment. So we thought, well, what kind of DIY stuff can we do? And we had some extra insulation, so we rolled that out, uh, nailed that in, and then covered it with a couple layers of this black tablecloth that you used to see behind my kit in the old setup. And so again, re-salvaging old stuff that I still had lying around. And so we layered that, stapled that in to be also a fiber barrier and just keep everything up in there so it's not making a mess. And so that also helped a lot with reflective sounds bouncing back at the drum set. All in all, that's pretty much it. And there's a, some additional uh, RLX foam in a couple of the corners, uh, but there's not a whole lot of treatment on the other end. Really the end of the room where the speakers are is more of a live end, honestly. And then this is more of the dead end where the drums are, which is kind of cool. It's cool when you can do that with a room because it means you can place mics around the room and pick up different types of natural reverbs and natural room sounds, which makes it more versatile and is really unique, I think. Now this video would not be complete without listening to the before and after after the drums right here, this microphone setup before any treatment and then after all the treatment. Now there was a difference in where I placed the overheads. In the before, the overheads are in an XY, pretty much pointed like this directly above the kit. And for the after, they were a spaced pair, but they're the same distance from the kit in both. You'll notice a little bit more stereo spread in the after, but they should both be picking up roughly the same amount of room sound regardless. And I actually didn't even use the room mics for this test. It's just overheads and close mics, and yet you're still gonna hear a huge difference. By the way, check out Aaron's website in the description below for any of your acoustic needs. If you're in the Atlanta area and you're interested in reaching out, all of that info is below. So go check that out. Aaron is very good at what he does. So now let's listen to the A-B test. I don't have video for both of these, but you don't need to see me play. You can just listen. So here we go.
Thanks guys for watching. I hope you found this video interesting, informative, and maybe encouraging if you're trying to do some sound dampening on a budget. Either way, I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you on the next video this Friday. Thanks guys.